Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And in this video, we're going to talk again about the 1972 VW bus and show you the progress uh, thus far. And in our next video, or in a future video, not necessarily the next video, in the future video, we're going to talk about this and this. So in this brief episode, we're going to talk about the battery boxes. And um, this battery box that we use in these are actually made out of 14 gauge steel. And this is just the raw box. It has the um, a return and a flange and they're cut out on a laser and they have little notches and everything and so it just kind of goes together like a puzzle and then once these are welded they're extremely strong and so what I'm going to be doing today is test fitting I've already test fit to make sure that the cells fit in that part was good so now going to uh, double check and make sure that they fit, you know, the OD fits into our um, space and then also prepare for the mounting. So there's additional welding and so forth going to be done to these to um, allow us to mount these in the vehicle securely and also uh, we're gonna, we'll be punching holes in these for our cabling that kind of thing um, and so but next we're going to check the fitment so to do that I'm going to remove because that battery box is going where the original fuel tank was and to get the clearance to install it I'm going to remove our board right here that we showed you in a previous episode so it's just going to be five bolts and that will come down and be totally out of the way. And so five bolts and then we had like half a dozen wires to disconnect. Uh, I labeled them and uh, disconnected them. So now let's just drop the five bolts and bring that out. And we're going to leave that out until the battery boxes are complete because after we weld bracketry to them and punch holes in them and that kind of thing, uh, they're going to be powder coated. And so we're going to be in and out a few times. And so this is done. It just needs, you know, a wiring connect to it, but we've got our terminal straps for those connections. So basically we can remove this now and set it aside and it will go in later. So here's a shot of the rear battery box in place. You can see it's pretty much fills the opening. You have support, you know, stock and you know body parts that limit the width of that opening. And so both on the bottom and above. Let me see if I can change the lighting here. So you can see you know the fender well on the bottom I guess it on the top there and so same on both sides so that's what is going to restrict our width and everything and you can see we're using the height and everything so these are a tight fit that's why we check things and that's why we have very tight tolerances on all of our boxes and everything. We don't want those cells moving around at all. And uh, we don't have anything extra to deal with in many cases. And so that's an example. Fairly tight fit. So like I said, uh, we'll do our bracketry setups and uh, all that. Make the marks and everything. Goes back next door where they'll 
weld everything and uh, the boxes will be ready for powder coating after we do our battery um, hold down uh, devices which are it's all but part of it welded in in other words the cells will slip in and then there's like a, a gate piece that then locks them in but anyway um, once that's done then off to get the finish so let's go take a look at the one that will be under the rear seat. So here's the box that goes under the rear seat. Um, you know, they're all different. If you look at some of our other uh, videos featuring VW buses, um, different years have different um, parameters that we deal with. And so um, the 72s and and through 76 or so I think have this uh, wider box because of what we can do in the rear in the uh, fuel tank area and some of them have uh, smaller boxes in the back here they don't go quite all the way as far across they actually have two less cells here and we can put two more cells where the fuel tank is so you know it's not one size fit all it's based on the vintage of the vehicle. You can see that there will still be room behind the seat actually because the seat will sit on top of this battery box and so there's a, a cavity here behind that. You can see the seat belt attachment points. So you know the seat will lift out and you will have kind of a concealed storage area there. Um, so anyway, uh, the, the, the seat back still can pivot forward and so forth. So anyway, that's the battery box fitment and we'll, uh, we'll kind of let you see once they're installed what they look like. But that's the two battery boxes that go in this vehicle. Uh, it moves the, the weight forward overall compared to a stock vehicle um, and we don't have any weight increase beyond the axles we actually move it inboard which makes these things sit nice so that's the current status we're still waiting on machine shop parts and uh, we're bottom balancing our cells right now. So once these are done and then bolted in place, you know, we've got all of our control wiring or the majority of it done. So that all goes pretty quick. Um, the only other thing to do on this one would be once we have the, the motor and the adapter is we will, um, do the rear motor mount and we will be using the original hanger as part of that. So as we prepare to mount the rear battery box or not the rear one I guess that the box that goes underneath the rear seat um, it's just obvious uh, looking at the blank slate here that there are tons of holes in the pan or the floor of, of this bus I I've never seen so many it it's incredible I mean it's, it's, the more you look the more you see and there's just so many holes and they're not little holes And let it be noted that I haven't drilled any holes yet. <laughs> These are all existing holes. And even in the walkthrough here, look at this. I mean, I, I, I'm just, uh, I'm floored. <laughs> uh, how many holes there are in this thing. Um, I guess there's one way to reduce the weight, huh? Anyway. Um, 
we will not be adding any holes for the wiring. We'll run our cables through one of those. I mean, there's three big holes right there. And we'll put a uh, pass through in there and uh, run the wire there. Gland net was the word I was looking for. Put a gland net in there. But, yeah. I, mean, I don't know how well things show up on the camera, but it's just holes galore. So anyway, just just thought I'd uh, share that with you. I just thought it was kind of interesting. And, you know, we do a lot of vehicles and we do a lot of VWs. And, you know, the, the VWs are one of the most adulterated vehicles on the planet. I mean, they're modified and customized, you know, out the wazoo. But... I think, as far as my memory goes, this is the bus with the most holes. <laughs> and so, um, we are very stingy, and I recommend you be the same when it comes to putting a hole, especially in a classic car. Um, and so, we typically use existing mounting points, like uh, the seat belt anchors here. We have a bracket that will attach there that then attaches to uh, points on our battery box. That's just one of multiple mounting points. But we really do. We, 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 we're very careful about the number of holes that we drill and where we put them. Uh, the idea is maybe you could put it back to stock and nobody would be the wiser. They wouldn't notice anything that, you know, was, uh, wasn't there before. So anyway, uh, just a little more food for thought. Keep in mind, that's where it's good to have that big picture understanding. Know what you need to do before you do it and why. And that's what our workshops uh, really do well is they give you that big picture understanding Okay, we're gonna finish today's video with a uh, little request and um, So we would like you to answer uh, four questions and The purpose of asking the questions is for a future video and uh, it's on a topic that is probably the most misunderstood out of all of the conversion components and that is the battery management system and so there's just a lot of misinformation out there and so we're trying to kind of get a benchmark on what people know or don't know what they believe that kind of thing so we're asking these four questions in regards to a battery management system. What is the purpose of a battery management system? What are the necessary features that are required of a battery management system? And why are those features needed or necessary? Uh, so don't just you know list something. Uh, we want to know why, and then. What happens if you don't use a battery management system? So, you know, you wouldn't think this would be necessary to say, but having been on YouTube now for a number of years, it is very obvious, and it was obvious from the very beginning, but when you've been on for a dozen years, it's painfully obvious that there are people that feel compelled to comment whether they know anything or not and so we don't uh, uh, publish uh, all the comments uh, some of them are so poorly written that we don't know if they're it's a comment or a question or what or what they're trying to say um, I realize English isn't everybody's first language and that will account for some others I'm 
guessing it's just low IQ or something. But um, so anyway, if you don't know anything about battery management systems, don't waste your time and don't waste ours. If you do, we'd love for you to share what you know with, uh, with us and with our audience. And based on the responses, we will feature a video or videos on this topic. So we appreciate your time in uh, answering these four questions. And we thank you for your time in watching our videos. And we'll see you in the next one.